rewards in this life and in ages to come. Part 5 We are also rewarded in our afterlife. Not for our sin, but for what is right. Chapter 1 Traditional Christian Teaching has much to say about God punishing people for their sins. But all of God's dealings with man are good and positive, and always in love. God will not be harsh with us for our failures. He doesn't reward us to the extent that we are sinful. Instead, He will be looking for the things which are rightly established in us. Micah 7 verse 18 God pardons iniquity and passes over our rebellious acts. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 5 speaks of the destruction of the flesh so that the spirit may be saved. He is mindful that we are but dust and overlooks our ignorance. See Link 9 Destroying the flesh to save the spirit. God rewards according to the righteousness and cleanness he finds in us. Second Samuel 22 The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not acted wickedly against my God. For all his ordinances were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. This is helpful when it is seen as a heart attitude towards God. It isn't helpful if seen as keeping religious laws, such as the Sabbath. Consider what Paul said in Colossians 2, verse 16 to 23, about not letting anyone tell you to keep laws and statutes. I was also blameless toward him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness.
according to my cleanness before his eyes. He is patient and compassionate and doesn't deal with us harshly because of sin in us. Psalms 103 The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He does not always strive with us, nor does he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. God is destroying the wickedness of our old nature. But he loves us and cares for us in the process. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. Ezekiel 20 Then you know that I am the Lord, when I have dealt with you for my name's sake, not according to your evil ways or according to your corrupt deeds. Micah 7 Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession? The remnant of his possession or inheritance. This remnant is literally the surviving part. By this, I understand that God inherits the new creation born of Him. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. He turns back to us and has compassion on us. He treads our iniquities underfoot. 
Yes, you cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You give truth and unchanging love. It is true, God has taken no notice of past ignorance. But now it is a time to repent. Acts 17 Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all people everywhere should repent because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man, Jesus, whom he has appointed. Having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. Second Corinthians 5 God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them. Chapter 2 When are we to cover sin? And when are we not to cover it? God doesn't reward us according to our sins. And we should be like him, covering the sins of others, not exposing them, not judging them and rewarding them with what we think they deserve. The Pharisees wanted to see the immoral woman receive the harshest sentence. Jesus wanted repentance. John 8 They said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery. In the very act, what then do you say? He said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Jesus said to her, I do not condemn you either. Go, from now on sin no more. In fact, we too are to cover each other's sins, while the process of dealing with them is taking place. First Peter 4 Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins.
Proverbs 10 Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all transgressions. James 5 My brothers, if any among you strays from the truth, and one turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Psalms 32 How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Proverbs 17 He who conceals a transgression seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates intimate friends. However, even though we are not to expose others' sins, we are not to cover our own sin. Psalms 32 I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Proverbs 28 He who conceals his transgressions does not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them finds compassion. In a church situation, should we leave the sins of a pastor or authority figure hidden? Such a situation can often be artificial because the man is placed in a position of adulation and respect which no man should receive. The combination of this, along with finance and power, can readily lead to immorality. The New Testament has only a little to say about this. First Corinthians 5 Judge those who are within the church. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves. First Timothy 5 Do not receive an accusation against an elder except on the basis of two or three witnesses. Those who continue in sin rebuke in the presence of all, so that the rest also will be fearful of sinning. Preachers have often used fear to regulate people's behaviour.
Here, Paul seems to have been one of them. But that sort of pressure is not needed by the Holy Spirit to sow the good news of Christ into anyone's heart. Destroying the flesh to save the spirit. First Corinthians 5, verse 1. It is actually reported that there is immorality among you. You have become arrogant and have not mourned instead, so that the one who had done this deed would be removed from your midst. For my part, present with you in spirit, though absent in body, I have already, as in your presence, passed sentence on such an offender as this, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have met with you in spirit, and by the power of our Lord Jesus. I have consigned that individual to Satan, for the destruction of his flesh, in order that his spirit may be saved, on the day of our Lord Jesus. Paul was not using any special mystical power or presence. He was exercising the authority given to him by God. However, he was merely a normal, frail person, as we all are. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? Clean out the old leaven, so that you may be a new lump. And see also 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Jeremiah 30, verse 11 For I am with you, declares the Lord, to save you. For I destroy completely all the nations where I have scattered you. Only I do not destroy you completely. But I chasten you justly, and by no means leave you unpunished. Jeremiah 51 verse 5 For neither Israel nor Judah has been forsaken by his God, the Lord of hosts, although their land is full of guilt, flee from the midst of Babylon, and each of you will save his life. Do not be destroyed in her punishment, for this is the Lord's time of vengeance and giving reward. This was Rewards in This Life and in Ages to Come, Part 5.